Hello and welcome to Quarantine Chronicles. My name is Blair Henley and I am so happy to be joined today by a two-time Australian Open singles champion, a former world number one and Olympic gold medalist. The list goes on. Victoria Azarenka, it is so good to see you. Thank you for having me. Okay, we're gonna get right into our first segment. It's called Wellness Check. It's pretty self-explanatory. You are on day seven or eight. It's tough to keep track of a 14 day hard quarantine at the Grand Hyatt Hotel. You're without your son, Leo. How are you doing? I'm doing good. All right, on your social channels, you released a really thoughtful statement slash letter where you gave everyone a bit of perspective. You appeal to your fellow players, to the media, to err on the side of grace in a nutshell. What made you decide to write that? Um, well, I wrote that, um, honestly, I wrote that because I felt that after having a lot of like kind of internal conversations and kind of seeing how media has uh, influenced also a lot of maybe some emotional posts and emotional uh, things that this all and we were not focused on a bigger picture just kind of trying to focus on ourselves and my probably the last point for me was when I heard that Craig started to have you know, kind of threats and people coming to his house. I felt that that was starting to really be out of control. And I was actually talking with my agent on the phone call when he told me that this happened, kind of recapping another Zoom call. And I said, okay, well, I think there is, I, I'm gonna write something cause it's just, it's just too much. And I wrote that and I wanted to send it out to all the players internally which 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 i have um and then the other parts the media part and obviously the public part um for the community was not i wasn't going to be able to do that internally so i felt that it was important to also post it socially um and i feel that and also i, I want to be like very clear that majority of players do feel exactly the same way that I feel. And my message doesn't only represent how I feel, it's an observation of a lot of people as well. And obviously my personal feeling of the situation. So uh, I also wanna point that out because I think it is important that people are not put in the same box uh, with maybe some people who, you know, got their emotions, uh, get the best out of them. And, and, and we all kind of make sometimes bad judgments and bad mistakes. But I feel that a, a lot of players have an understanding and responsibility of keeping everybody safe and what comes with it and the impact that, you know, this virus have, has had on people. So um, that was also part of why I wanted to write the message because, um, and, and the response to it obviously has been uh, really amazing and from public and also from players who have uh, a, kind of said, you know what, I feel the same way or I agree with you. And, and this is not the point of agreeing with me. I just, the reason I'm pointing this out is, is to kind of highlight the point that a lot of players do feel the same way. Leo is home, as we mentioned, which adds a whole nother layer for you specifically, because you've done a really good job of bringing him along with you to, to so many tournaments and events. How are his FaceTime skills? How are you staying in touch? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we talk, we talk a lot and I get a lot of videos and stuff. And uh, um, thankfully, I still have uh, kind of influence on him even even over FaceTime he does uh listen to me pretty well um and uh he's requesting a lot of stories for me to tell him which has always been the case um at home uh so but I have to be a bit more 
uh, convincing and innovative with stories to keep his focus and attention a bit longer because FaceTime and kids, they, uh, they're they not that that great <laughs> with it, but we do play and, and I try, I, I really try my best to, you know, get him engaged, but he's, he's, he's good. I mean, he, we're, we're used to, to having FaceTime um, with, with our situation with him and, and his dad as well. So he's not, he's not new to FaceTime, which is, which is also very helpful. Vika, if this scenario were playing out even 20 years ago, I don't know that we'd be talking about mental health as a factor, but I know Tennis Australia has made resources available for that. I've never been in a room yeah. by myself for two weeks, certainly not in preparation to compete on the world stage. How important is that support for you and just for players in general? Well, I think that having the resources and opportunity to to take care of your mental health are super important. Um, I personally think that um, for, for me mentally, you know, as a first day was very, very hard. And uh, I was, as everyone, I was very devastated. You know, it's it's frustrating and, and it's sad. And, and the reason why I let all those emotions go because I, I have been practicing, you know, and the importance of mental health over the years. And I think mental health goes well beyond just being a tennis player. And I think last year, it was a big part of that, of talking about having psychologists and working with psychologists. And the, the message that is brought is always to enhance performance. And I think that is not the only way to, to, to approach that. Uh, when we are athletes, we are focused on enhancing performance and contributing something that will help us to, to, to get better. But overall health and especially mental health goes beyond just being a tennis player. And so I think it's all linked up. It will help you with your game. But I'm, unfortunately, sometimes um, when you're talking about psychology and, and sport, it's all based on performance and not on well and well-being. And I hope this message gets turned around a bit more. And I think right now it uh, couldn't be a better uh, opportunity to kind of highlight that, that uh, and the importance of it. So I have talked about it a bit last year, but expanding on this message, I think it's really important. All right, one more question on the more serious side and then we'll move into some more tennis talk. But as you know, and as we all know at this point, there was no perfect way to do Operation Australian Open as I've been calling it, but there have been a lot of thoughts on the players who are in Adelaide and in particular as a two-time champ, a former world number one, how have you been able to see that scenario with the players who are there versus the majority of players who are in Melbourne? I don't really look at it maybe as a lot of players look at it. Um, I take it as a situation as it is. I have uh, I have my trust and belief of when people are telling me for what reasons that has been done. I don't try to... Uh, have a conspiracy theory or investigate uh, if that's true or not. I, uh, I believe that uh, for what reason this, this has been done and kind of that's it. I think, I think the, the difficult part sometimes for, for people to accept, it's not necessarily what maybe you don't have or you don't get is the reality that somebody else has it and you don't. So, um, I think that, thankfully, I don't struggle with, with that, you know, personally. Um, so I don't necessarily look at Adelaide or other situations as it's uh, affecting me that somebody has something or I don't. That's really great. All right, we're gonna move on to what we call best practices, where we talk all things tennis, practice, the return to the court, and of course, I got to see what you did in Cincinnati and New York. You were playing incredible tennis. You're coming into the major where you've had the most success. 
How has this scenario changed your outlook or your expectations going into the Australian Open, if at all? Well, my excitement level has not dropped for a second. <laughs> my expectation are not there so i don't need to adjust them in the way in terms of playing or not playing um so for me that hasn't ch changed i think the only thing is different right now is my management of the time that i will have prior to playing and how my body is going to react so that is going to be a day day to day assessment and adjustment and adaptation so on all those fronts, um, nothing really has changed for me. I'm still gonna do my job the best I can. Um, I will have to adjust some things, um, but as I said, oh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe in 14 days, I'll feel great and be like, well, that's maybe what I needed, I don't know. So I take it, I take it one day at a time. Um, it was, it, as I said, it, was not, it wasn't my first choice uh, of you know to to do that but that's that's just reality and, and 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 i adapt we've seen videos of the players trying to stay fit in their rooms what have your strategies been and how many hours a day are you spending working on that um quite a few hours uh, i think it's important it's not about qu quantity it's a quality and uh being a bit uh you know having a bigger picture why you do it for because you can do a lot of things are they going to help you? Uh, that's that's the bigger question. Um, so I don't want to flood any more social media with another wall video, <laughs> so, or or uh, or a band workout. I think that we've seen we've seen a lot. But I have taken videos for my um, maybe later on something that I will do. Uh, but <laughs> it is definitely um, a creative part has to come out come up you know with with all those exercises and uh, the way the ways of training that we that we've been have to, we've been kind of forced to adapt to a lot of people have talked about having the two weeks of hard quarantine for those who have that and then heading straight back out into competition some people say you have one week before the australian open you'll be fine some people say it's an injury risk where do you fall on that spectrum? Um, I think that people who are not in the situation um, maybe don't have um, a good understanding of what they're talking about. Um, and I think there should be a sort of sensitivity to the judgment that is, that, that is going out. Um, because it does depends a lot. I don't think that any um, doctor or uh, you know medical uh, person or even coach will say that after not being after not being out in uh, just just a simple example out in the sun out of in the air to go out and playing in Australian heat, which is a bit different. Some people are struggling with a full preparation in the heat. And without kind of having to be able to adjust to that, that's uh, that's not easy. And we cannot just not be uh, also mindful that it is. It can be very impactful for the body. Uh, it can be dangerous for the body. Those things are all on the table. I think the important is important is how you how we manage that. And if you have a poor management of the next days when you do come out, that can be there can be serious consequences. It's just what it is. Uh, and so having one week, um, I mean, we can go, we can talk about it both ways. It's it's true, you have one week, but also going into a grand slam without any matches and without, you know, maybe having a full training, it's you myself those chances or not. So there's a lot of components and thought process that comes to it. And I would kindly ask people who are not in the situation, maybe don't judge, um, you know, people, players, or their, their um, 
choices of what they do or what they don't do uh, without kind of knowing and being in their shoes. I think that's important to, to be very clear on that. I think that is good advice for all of us at all times. So thank you for that. Uh, and I wanna finish Vika with our last segment. It's called Show and Tell, also very self-explanatory. Do you have any comfort items or snacks or anything that you brought that you can tell us about or show us? What, how have you made your hotel room home? Uh, well, I, I am <laughs> home as much as you can. Um, one of my items that I really love, uh, love is like, I have a candle um, that I bring sometimes with me and I, and I use it a lot during my meditation. So that kind of keeps me a bit grounded and reminds me of home. And in terms of snacks, I brought my cookies, a pack of the cookies that I've been a bit obsessed with <laughs> the last few days my my one of my really good friends in bahamas introduced me to to them and i was like oh my god i have to have them and literally two days before i left i was like you know what i might as well just take a pack just in case and i did so <laughs> that's been a bit comforting yeah but i have my book that i read you know i have some things online but as i said I kept myself really busy that it's like, oh, I'm always home. I'm, I'm always busy doing emails and then doing things and working out. So yeah, it's, I think it's more of a mindset than, than things. So are these cookies things that you can buy in the grocery store? Are you allowed to share? Or are we worried that they might sell out and you won't be able <laughs> to get them anymore? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, it's, it's actually, I posted it on Twitter because when I was on the plane, I was like, what are the best, like people like, different cookies because I, I i like different cookies not that i eat them a lot but uh, there's this like french cookies that when i was in france i really like it's uh petite ecole or something they called so those were my favorite and then my friend introduced me to the it's a keep i don't i don't know the name kibler or something like that it's like the name kibler it's like the is it the right name i don't want to butcher it yeah, key, the Keebler little elf. Kebler or Kibler or whatever. <laughs> yes. So so I tried those and like you got to put them in the freezer. So they got to be like cold and stuff. Uh, and I was like, okay, that's 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 like that's the jam. Like that's the jam. So <laughs> um, like yeah, so now. those cookies are been like my favorite lately. I don't want to just say just those, but those have been my favorite lately. Good stuff. Uh, and uh, finally, Vika, you're always, you always have a good tune rocking, uh, whether we see it on social media, you always got the headphones on, anything you're listening to right now. Yeah, I listen to a lot of reggaeton. <laughs> Still, I've, <laughs> I think people, I don't know who my neighbors are, but I'm sure they're enjoying my music. It's like, maybe I should be a bit more sensitive and, and not blast it so, so hard, but like, when I'm working out, I always like my music really loud. So I don't know, my, I think my, my physio is a bit sick of my reggaeton, but you know what, it is what it is. <laughs> I think anything goes uh, at the moment. And finally, Vika, you are the queen of quotes. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to anyway. Do you have a quote that you can leave us with? Because they're always good. You, they're always inspirational. Um, the quote to, uh, well, my favorite one, uh, was the, um, the expectation is the mother of all disappointments. I think that's kind of, um, you know, very accurate to, to right now. Um, and all the quotes is, is really depends on how I feel that day. Uh, so I try to, you know, kind of connect to it. I, I take serious, uh, serious approach to it. I just don't want to post just anything. So, but yeah, this one has been resonating a bit. It's, and it's, it's a bit of like a reminder for, for me as well to, you know, keep myself uh, kind of clear and present. Well, Vika, I know you have a lot of time these days. You've got, a, you filled it very well, it sounds like, but we appreciate the bit you gave to us. I think I speak on behalf of many people in tennis, players, media, otherwise, but thank you for representing our sport well. I appreciate it personally, so thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time too. Uh, it, was, it was my pleasure.